Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. Today, I am excited about what we're going to have a look at this week. This is such an important subject for us as believers. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he paid for all our sin. He said, it is finished. And in taking those sins, he took every sin that you and I could ever commit, and he bore sin itself and paid for it in full, in full. It is done. It is finished. You don't have to. It's not like any sin was left out of the package. And when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you say, Father, thank you. I know Jesus died for me. I receive him as my Lord and Savior. I'm choosing to serve you. And the Bible tells us, the Word of God says that when you do that, you are saved. That is settled. doesn't matter what sin you've ever committed. You are freed from it. The Bible says that it's removed as far as the east is from the west. It's dropped into the sea. God remembers your sin no more. You've been cleansed of all unrighteousness. You've been made righteous, the righteousness of God. And so if for any reason you had to leave this planet, you would go to heaven because as far as God is concerned, Every sin has been removed. Now, that's an amazing truth. That is what we call the gospel. That's the good news. Absolute salvation. Now, the exciting thing is that in that same moment, much more was paid for than just the sin. Much more was paid for than just getting us out of hell and into heaven. In fact, Jesus bore so much more and part of that price that he paid was your and my healing. That's right. Healing, health, so we could live in the divine life of God. So now you and I have this promise of healing. Now, I know what it's like is sometimes as we go through life, you know, the year goes around and comes down to winter or the next season. It sometimes happens in summer. So in winter, usually we hear people saying, oh, it's the flu season. Or if you get into summer, oh, the pollen season. Now I'm going to have all kinds of allergies. And there's almost these cycle things that people just accept. Well, you know, this time of the year, I always get the flu. If anyone's going to get the flu, I get it first. And that's exactly when companies, you've probably noticed it, they get onto television and another place and they say, flu season's coming, make sure you get your flu shot today. And the whole idea is to prepare yourself ahead of the season. If you take these vitamins or drink this supplement or this miracle juice or something like that, some of them are good. They are healthy things. But instead of being in fear of the season, and using all kinds of drugs and things that could actually harm us potentially, when God has already paid the price for our healing, why don't we prepare ourselves in the realm of the Spirit, in our hearts, in our faith, ahead of time, so that when everybody else is getting sick, we're already walking strong in faith. See, the, the example that I always like to use is, let's say... You have to suddenly move some heavy furniture or a big box or, you know, push a car. Sometimes people try and do that without the training and they end up pulling their backs and hurting themselves and, and some, you know, damaging something. What we should be doing is regularly training ahead of time. You know, get the weights, get the barbells, get the uh, develop strength. So when it comes time to pick up the box, your body's already used to it. So much the same way with our, when it comes to our spirits. We can prepare our spirits in faith before the problem arrives. I don't want the devil walking in my house and going, oh, what's the scripture? Where, what must I do now? Now, by then, he's already moving in and he's trying to cause damage. No, I prepare myself ahead of time. So when the attack comes, you're able to resist it. Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so we can prepare ourselves before we get sick. It's not like some of these people pull out the healing scriptures when they're already sick, which is good. We need to do that. If you've landed up getting sick and you say, now let me go to the Word. Let me use the Word of God. But why don't we prepare ourselves ahead of time? Just the way people will take flu shots to put off the flu. 
Why don't we take our Holy Ghost scripture shots and prepare our spirits ahead of time? And so when the onslaught and the attack comes, we already are strong in faith in that area and we can walk through the situation without being touched. That's a very important thing also to know about faith. Faith could either be used as the, the rescue, you're in trouble and now I need faith to get out of it, or you can develop faith and be able to go through the fire, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into that fiery furnace, even though they were in the fire, it didn't consume them. Sometimes you and I have to go through things, but when we go through it using the word of God, it'll not touch us. And the Bible says you couldn't even smell smoke on their clothes. And that's what we want to do, that when everybody else is dropping and getting sick and, and hurting, that if anything touches you, it won't harm you. So let's do that. Let's, let's spend some time this week and just don't miss any of these messages now. Come and listen, everyone. Get your pen out. We're going to go through a lot of scriptures. Basically what I'm going to do, just the same way the doctor will say, well, you've got this and that disease, and he gives you three or four bottles with, with medicine in it. I'm going to give you a list of scriptures that you write them down and then every time you feel you need to, you take it out and you speak these scriptures over your life and prepare yourself. Then when the problems come or whatever, you're really fired up. This is the doctor's prescription for Holy Ghost healing. Amen. Dr. Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. Let's start here. Let's have a look at 3 John, the third letter of John. And he says here, The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Now listen to verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, make sure we don't just skip over verse 2 because what can happen is somebody will go, well, you know, that's like when you write a letter to someone and you say, Dear John, I trust all is well and everything is going good with you. It's, it's not just an opening greeting. It, it, it can almost sound like that. But for me, when I read this, the one word that jumps out of me in that verse is pray. Pray. In fact, why don't you right now just take your pen and circle that word pray because pray is what sets it apart. This isn't just I hope or I trust. Pray is a word spoken. Remember when you pray, you're praying to God. And remember Hebrews eleven six. without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if I'm going to pray, it has to be by faith. If it's not by faith, it's not really prayer. I mean, a lot of people have said things to God, but not in faith. That's not prayer. Prayer is when you are connected through the Word of God, knowing the will of God, and when you know the will of God, going to Him in the name of Jesus. Now, in that prayer, if I'm going in faith, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, that means I can't pray till I have the Word of God on the situation. That means for John to say, I pray, he already has the word of God on the situation. He's not just picking something out the air that he hopes is good for this guy. No, he says, I know what God says about this. And notice what God says about this, that you prosper in all things, in all things, in every area of your life, whether it's spirit, soul, body, relationships, or finances. So right there, you can see prosperity is the will of God because that's what he's praying. So it has to be the will of God. And then he says, and be in health. Now for today, why don't you just underline that? Be in health. Be in health. Not just that, you know, you would get health or experience health. No, be in health literally means that you are living in a state of healthy. That's a continual state. So for him to pray that Gaius will be in health, that must be God's will. So it is God's will for you to be healthy. So that's one of the areas we need to renew our minds to first is, is it God's will for us? Because sometimes people will say, well, you know, sometimes 
God allows the disease and that helps teach us a lesson and, uh, you know, teaches us to trust in him. Now, I'm going to give you scriptures on that. But just right off the bat, let me just ask you this question. If anybody's ever asked you that or said that to you, my question to them would be, can you imagine if you have a child, your son or your daughter, and you tell them regularly, don't climb up that tree because I don't want you falling out that tree. And, and if you do fall out of it, you may break something. I don't want that to happen. I don't want you to break anything. So don't climb the tree. And then one day you hear a screech coming out of the backyard and you run out there and there the child is lying on the floor and they tried to climb the tree and they fell out and they broke their arm. Now, what do we do as parents? Do we stand back and say, now you see, that is what I was talking about. Now, I told you not to climb the tree. I told you that you might break your arm if you do. And look what happened. You broke your arm. So now just as a lesson so that you know now that, that what I say is true. I'm going to leave your arm for a while, maybe three, four days. I don't know how I might feel after a while we can look at it again, but you might have to live with that for the rest of your life. Always as a reminder, don't climb the tree. Now, <laughs> if you knew somebody was doing that, imagine you see a child and that child's arm is all crooked and it's been like, and say, how long has that been like that? Oh, I don't know, about three or four months. Isn't it so, <laughs> it hurts every day. Well, why hasn't your dad fixed it? What, what, what would we do? We would call that child abuse. Isn't that right? Well, how can we possibly say that we are better fathers than our fa heavenly father? Because I don't know about you, if that happened to my child, even if I'm angry that they didn't listen to me, that's not the issue right now. They broke their arm. They're in agony. They're in pain. The first thing we're going to do is gather them up, get them in the car and get them down to some doctor that can help fix that thing as quick as possible. We may need to sit down later and have a conversation about how this happened. But first, let's get you better. Let's get you well. Let's get you healthy. And the same way God who loves you will not allow the devil to use sickness and disease to destroy you, to hurt you, or even to teach you a lesson. No, Jesus bore it on the cross. And so we're going to go to the word of God on the issue and see what is God's will. Because when I find out what God's will is, that's when I can walk in the fullness of what he's given me. So here we see, first of all, it is his prayer that we be in health. It is God's will and desire that you be healthy. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. So whenever you see the Holy Spirit present, you're going to see power present. The presence of the Holy Spirit brings power. Now, if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And the same power of God is inside of you. That always astounds me. Think about this. The Bible tells us right in the book of Genesis, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, what happened? The Holy Spirit was hovering. He was upon the face of the deep and nothing happened. And then God spoke and said, let there be light. And in that statement, light be, the full power of the Holy Spirit was released. And in that boom, power of God, he created the entire universe every day galaxy out there, every solar system, every sun, every planet, every part of that galaxy, every part of the universe, all created out of the words light be. You know how much power is in the Holy Spirit? Universe, creative power. And that same Holy Spirit came to dwell within you. When you're born again, the Holy Spirit moves in in full power inside of you. Think about that. You have got universe creative power inside you right now. And that power is what was in Jesus. God had anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the man Jesus on the earth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing. How many? All. There in your Bible, circle that word all. That's the key. He didn't heal just some or, or one or two. and He healed all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Well, isn't God with you today? Yes, he is. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so God is with you. 
and he will heal you. Jesus healed all. And sometimes people say, yeah, but that was while he was on the earth. That, that is Jesus. He was here. And, and you know, he, that's, that, that was back then, uh, almost 2,000 years ago. Well, doesn't Hebrews 13 verse 8 tell us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? That's the will of God. Whatever Jesus did, you can look at how he lived his life, how he operated. If it was his will yesterday, it's still his will today, and it will be his will forever. God says, I am the Lord who does not change. And so if it is his will for us to be healed, and he went about doing good healing all, that means today he is still healing all. He may not be on the planet in his flesh and bone body, but he's still the healer. Now, have a look at Exodus chapter 15. Look at that last statement in verse 26. He says there, I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals you. Now, the way that reads in the Hebrew text, he says he is Jehovah Rapha. Now, I'm not Hebrew. Please excuse my pronunciation. But uh, that's just the way I read it in the, in the dictionary. That Jehovah Rapha, that the way that's written, he is Jehovah the healer. He is Jehovah the physician. You could almost put it this way. I am the healing God. That's one of his names. He is the healing God. In other words, that's his nature. So if he sees sickness or disease that is not according to his will that's because of the curse he says i want to heal that 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 is his will that's his desire that's what drives him he is the healing god and that's why he says in jeremiah 30 verse 17 he gives this promise i will restore health to you i will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds you see we've got to renew our minds to this Deuteronomy 28, you remember that's the way God says, if you obey God, then all these blessings will come upon you. And then he starts listing all the, the curses. In the list of curses is sickness and disease. Sickness came because of sin. Sickness came because of disease. And Jesus bore every curse and he brought back the blessing of Abraham. And so if sickness and disease was under the curse, Jesus paid for it, he gave his life for it, and now he's removed, he's paid for that curse so that we can step back into the blessing. So when you receive the blessing, that same blessing, that he is the healing God, God says, if I see you have a problem, if I see you've been sick, I'll not only will I heal you, I'll even restore you and heal the wound, the result of that sickness and disease, and he is our healer. Hallelujah. He is your healing God. Now, we're going to spend some time this week having a look at this, and you'll be blessed by it. Now, watch this, and I'll see you right afterwards. Welcome to Come Celebrate. Come on, let's give our Lord Jesus praise. This is the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice and we're glad in it. Alan and Janine Bagg invite you to join us for Come Celebrate 2020 from the 23rd till the 27th of March. It's amazing to see how God has grown us. We've gone from strength to strength. And so this week really is honoring God. It is His church. It's all His doing, and He's going to continue doing it. Can we just give Him praise? He is our King. He is our Lord. If you're outside the Cape Town area, book your tickets and accommodation and make plans to be part of this faith-building conference. We're going to grow phenomenally this week. That's Come Celebrate 2020, taking place from the 23rd till the 27th of March. For any information, please contact us or visit us online at allenbagministries.org. God is our healing God. In a time and age when technology has advanced so rapidly, it is vital for the church to continue living by faith. Now, this is a collection of messages that I've taught over the years. In this series, Alan Bag answers questions like, is healing for today? And if so, 
will God heal me? He also deals with misconceptions like, does God does use God sickness to punish us? Fill your heart with faith, faith. and you will stand, stand against the sickness and disease. And disease. Alan Bagg teaches practically on how to overcome sickness. Empowering your spirit man so that that health can flow out into your, into your flesh. flesh. In this teaching, Alan Bagg will equip you with practical tools to live in divine health, as well as to actively combat and overcome sickness effectively. You can stand strong. So when sickness does try come along, and try to take you, you're able to withstand it and come against it. Order the single teaching, Our Holy Spirit Health Shots, on MP3 at this price. If you get the power collection, then you're gonna get this one for free. For free. With it. If you would like to purchase the Healing Power Collection on MP3, we will also include the teaching, Our Holy Spirit Health Shots, as a free gift. Purchase these online by visiting our website or if you prefer, contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries by making use of any of our contact details. God is our healing God. His name, one of His names is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Literally the healing God. Now, God has given us His Word and it's important to know and understand. That's what we've been talking about. Faith comes by healing. Hearing, hearing by the word of God. Just the same way we eat food all the time, we can't live on the memory of the food that we ate six months ago. So we need to eat every day. The same way we need to fill and inject God's word into our hearts. That's why we make these products available. This healing power collection is a whole bunch of messages that I taught over a long period of time in there is are the messages around does God heal today and if God heals today will he heal me and how can I receive that healing and it's packed full of every scripture you can think of and the word behind it the revelation and by listening to it you're literally empowering your spirit man so that that health can live out into your flesh and you will see the healing manifest so I encourage you to get a hold of that today. And of course, the message that I spoke recently now on this is God's, we call it His Holy Ghost Health Shots. In other words, when you go down to the pharmacy, you can go get shots for the flu. You can take the Word of God ahead of season. Some people say, you know, every season I land up getting the flu. Watch it. This is flu season. I'm going to get flu. I'm going to go get my flu shots. Why don't we prepare ourselves ahead of time on the Word of God? And this is a nice compact message. Get all the word into you. And that way, by getting the scriptures into you, you can stand in faith for it and stand in agreement with the word that you stay strong and you stay healthy. And when everybody else around you seems to be getting the flu, you can stay healthy and strong in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that you can get today. The one offer is you can get that on its own. And then the other one is if you get the power pack, then you get that free with that. And so I really encourage you to get a hold of it, get into the Word, and make sure that you are fired up with the faith of God and you can walk in the divine life of God. Amen. Now, the most important thing that can happen to us beyond our physical healing is our spiritual salvation. It begins with knowing God, begins with knowing that you're born again. You've been watching this program and you've not yet given your life to Jesus. My friend, I want you to know God loves you. He died for you. He sent His Son to pay the price for your and my sin. And then He rose from the dead. Today He is alive. And the Bible says if you believe that and confess it with your mouth, you'll be born again, saved. And I want to lead you in that prayer right now. Right there, while you're watching, say this out loud with me. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you. I know you died for my sin. You paid for me, and I thank you for it. I receive it today as your free gift, and I know as I call you Lord, I am a child of God, born again. I love you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. If you've just given your life to Jesus, I've got a free gift for you. This is a Bible study program that will take you through the Bible in a year. And this card here is going to explain to you what's just happened now that you've given your life to Jesus. And now that you're a Christian, what happens after that? 
So that's just a little guideline. And then this great CD, my Christian passport out of this world of failure into his kingdom of victory. That's a free gift. I want to sow that into your life. I'll even pay the postage. You just call us on that phone number or write to me at that address over there. And once we get your details, we'll get that to you. Welcome to the family. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Were they called to equip believers to flourish in their ministries? Alan and Janine Bagg are the senior pastors of the Bay Christian Family Church, one church in many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church multiple locations. Alan and Janine Bagg invite you to join us this weekend at the Bay Christian Family Church for some great times of worship in God's amazing presence, for faith-building messages from God's uncompromised Word, and for some great times of fellowship with the family of God. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to, Join the family at the Bay Christian Family Church this weekend for amazing times in God's presence and faith-building times in God's life-changing Word. If you're nowhere near any of our locations, feel free to participate in our services by joining us online at allenbagministries.org. For any information relating to the Bay Christian Family Church, our contact details or our locations, please visit us online at allenbagministries.org. Allen Bag Ministries is making this week of programs available for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, you are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format, so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Choose life.